Yes, good, good. Abort those liberal fetuses. We don't want fetuses unless they are pure-blooded conservatives. So, the Supreme Court, was it two days ago now, overturned Roe v. Wade. That sucks, man. That really, really sucks. What does it mean? Um, what does it all mean? Well, Roe v. Wade, for those who didn't know, is a ruling. I'm sure, I assume you guys know this, but maybe you don't. It is a ruling from the 1970s, I think 73, in which women's rights to an abortion was constitutionally protected under privacy rights. Now, being founded on the right to privacy, the overturning of this legislation does not just mean that abortion is gone. All right. They left it up to the states to decide, but effectively abortion will be gone in like half the states at least, right? About half the states, which is really not cool. Not very cool, dude. We could also be looking at other rights being forfeited as a result of this specific legislation being overturned because it was originally founded on the right to privacy. So you could also lose your privacy in other areas, such as sexual health. Maybe the doctors want to know who you're having sex with, who you're doing the dirty with, right? Maybe they want to know if you're taking it up the b-hole by another, uh, you know, another man, right? And if you're doing that, I can tell you what, in a Christian fundamentalist uh, authoritarianism, that ain't going to fly. So I also work drug rehab personally, and I actually recently got a client who came in before he got into any health or legal trouble, right? He was doing illicit drugs and he understood himself to be relapsing and he came in before he got into any legal trouble, right? Even though he was doing illegal drugs. Now, I, as a healthcare provider, am not obligated to report that to the police because of privacy laws. Well, folks, if Roe v. Wade is anything to go by, and if the general pattern of behavior from the conservatives is anything, anything to go by, that too could go by the wayside. So we could see rehab clinics being effectively shut down and replaced with jails right? Because if I'm required to report that somebody's doing illicit drugs, they're going to be jailed. Boom, done. So real cool stuff. There is no bottom, as the title implies, no bottom to the amount of health info that could become uh, public knowledge. Okay. I'm even also kind of worried that this kind of knowledge, access to it could be sold to companies, you know, mental health conditions, right? Like uh, depression and anxiety or schizophrenia, right? There are a lot of people with schizophrenia, bipolar, other kinds of disorders that typically would be debilitating. But thanks to medicine, right, the modern miracle of uh, medical sciences, we can curtail those effects of those disorders and people can live mostly normal lives, right? Companies won't care, right? They'll want that information and they will be more likely to hire people who are of sound, quote unquote, sound mental health, right? Now, that may be a little bit farther down the line, but it's not out of the question, right? Nothing is. Nothing is. All right. We could be looking at a full stripping of all of our privacy, all of it. They'll be in our bedrooms, guys. It's really bad. It's really bad. All right. Also, quite frankly, I'm a selfish motherfucker and I want to fuck other people without that, uh, without worrying about pregnancy and without it becoming public knowledge. Okay. I'm in an open relationship, which means I get to fuck anybody that I want. Now, I haven't capitalized on this, but if I do at some point, I'd like to know that I can do it without it becoming a problem if she gets pregnant, right? Well, now I can't because in the great state of Ohio, we have introduced the heartbeat bill and we will get into that a little bit later. So, all right. Now, we had a great link posted in chat. It's a little bit out of left field, but I do want to add it in here because I, I, I saw bits of this earlier. I want to play it for you guys. I think it's really good stuff if I remember correctly. And right now, white people are really frightened. If you don't understand the destruction of Planned Parenthood uh, offices, and you don't understand the wall that we're going to build on the southern border of the United States, Alex you haven't read the book, dude, The Birth Dirt, by Ben so Wattenberg. Ben yeah. Wattenberg was a brilliant Jewish man who was a member of the American Enterprise Institute. And he wrote a book, the first paragraph of which says, the main problem confronting the United States today is there aren't enough white babies being born in this country. Mm. He was an advisor to presidents of the United States. He wrote the book in 1987. He says there are, if we don't change this and change it rapidly, white people will lose their numerical majority in this country and this will no longer be a white man's land. Now, I'm not misrepresenting, misrepresenting this. I'm telling you exactly, almost exactly what he says. He says there are three things we can do to solve this. Number one, we could pay women to have babies, as they have been doing in Western European nations for years. Then he says, and these are his words, Why not would mine. That be smart? Unfortunately, we would have to pay women of all colors to have babies, so we don't want to do that. Ah. 
He says the second thing we could do is increase the number of legal immigrants that are allowed into this country every year. Then once again he says, unfortunately, the vast majority of those wanting to come to this country today are people of color, so we don't want to do mm. that. The third thing he says, and white men... Don't want to water down the bloodline, folks. 60% of the fetuses that are aborted every year are white. If we could keep that 60% alive, that would solve our birth dearth. Does that sound like racism to you? And if it doesn't, I want to know why it doesn't. Very cool stuff. Thank you very much, Jane Elliott. That's just one element of this, right? This is a huge, deep rabbit hole of, of just shit. And it's really bad, and we'll get into it. So I want to show you something first. Now, as soon as this decision dropped, right, we have shit like this going on. And what you see here is okay, riot police outside of the Capitol. Now, isn't that interesting? Because I recall another event, frankly, Never that uh, I didn't really see very much of this. Now, I, I can't put my finger on it. It happened a little bit over a year ago, if I recall correctly, but I did pull up a video. Um, it's, it's, it's an event that you may know, that you may have heard of, so let's take a look. <laughs> ah, oh look, it's the Capitol building. Wait, but, but where are all the police at? Where's the riot gear? My goodness. It looks like it's very open to attack, very vulnerable, looking very submissive and breedable right now, Capital. Ah. Uh, not using protection. Oh my. They got quite close, didn't they? I'm not going to play the whole thing. I just wanted to give you a little taste. So yeah, uh, that's the difference that we're looking at between how they treat actual fascist takeovers and an impromptu thrown together protest in front of the Capitol building because rights are being stripped from us, right? Now, what's interesting is that these people claim to be pro-life, right? They love their fetuses. They love saying that it's all about a preventing murder right? Interesting thing, they're throwing tear gas at the protesters, and tear gas is an abortive fascian. Now, what is that? Well, if you can read context clues, that means that it induces abortion. So, if there are any pregnant women here in the crowds, they are at risk of either induced labor or an induced abortion. So, that's really cool. Just shoot it on right over there. Pop it over. There you go. There you go. Excellent stuff. Yes. Good, good. Abort those liberal fetuses. We don't want fetuses unless they are pure-blooded conservatives. Speaking of being pro-life, let's keep going. LAPD threatens to hit pro-abortion slash pro-choice protesters with their vehicles. As folks move out of the way, impatient ride police start shoving people aside, myself included. Wow. Excellent. So yeah, very pro-life of these people. I've always found it funny that uh, the people who claim to be pro-life are very much not pro-life unless it comes to anything that's not a fetus. All right. So in the great state of Ohio, we have this little thing called the heartbeat bill. Now, if you live in a state like Ohio, you'll know that the heartbeat bill is a piece of legislation that was introduced while Roe v. Wade was still active, right? It was introduced in Ohio along with several other states. I don't know that them off the top of my head, but I live in Ohio, so I know that it happened here. What does it do? So, at six weeks, the fetal tissue develops uh, cardiac activity, and this is what the conservatives call the heartbeat, all right? Now, at this point, the fetus is about yay big, about, about that big, right? Is this like an actual heart? Kind of, but not really, okay? Just kind of. The heart doesn't actually start circulating blood by itself within the fetus until later on in its development, all right? So, it's cardiac activity, but even besides all that, let's say that it was a functional heart. Let's just say for all intents and purposes that it was. It still doesn't matter, all right? The heart is a heart. The only reason that conservatives like to stick in on this uh, this one thing, right? They really like to, to hone in on this one aspect is because it's convenient. 
The heart historically has been used colloquially as like an equivalent to the soul, right? It's a very religious sentiment. So of course it's going to appeal to the religious uh, idiots that support the bill. We don't like to kill our unborn. We need them to grow up and fight our wars. Yep, it's true. I remember when this was taking place three years ago, tons of people I knew on Instagram were showing their opposition for it. Oh, you mean the Capitol riot? In Oklahoma, our bill was enacted within an hour of the ruling. Yeah. Yeah, it, it happened like boom, like that. They're called, uh, tr uh, what is it, hair trigger laws or just trigger laws? Something like that. So immediately push through just by virtue of Roe being overturned. Roe goes belly up. These come to life, right? They've been gestating, if you will, so to speak. So being from Ohio and being a boy that likes to fuck people in Ohio, I don't like this because this means that if I were to accidentally get anybody pregnant, uh, pregnant, right? They will not be able to get an abortion. They won't. Because here's the thing. Most girls don't know that they're uh, or anybody who is, you know, a womb haver, I guess, don't know that they're pregnant until past that six week period, right? Um, speaking of periods, it's because of the period. Usually the way that a woman discovers she's pregnant, unless she's trying to actively become pregnant, is because she missed her period. Now, periods can often come late. So even if they come every uh, four to five weeks. It could be two months or so before you're like, okay, well, you know, maybe something's up. Maybe I'll go get a pregnancy test, you know, because that guy from uh, whatever bar I was at, right? And, uh, you know, we went home and uh, played some League of Legends or whatever, which is far less disgusting than the things we did after that. Maybe he got me preggers. <laughs> so you go and get a pregnancy test and wow, what do you know? Both lines show up and you are the pregnante, right? Very good. Except that's not good if you're in Ohio, because if you don't want to be pregnante, you're fucked at that point. Now you have to be. And the only way to get unpregnante is to travel out of state to a state that allows you to get an abortion. And oftentimes that can be several states away, several hours away, you know, maybe even up to a day, depending on where you live. I don't know yet. I haven't looked into the specifics. Point being, it's very inconvenient, especially when there's an abortion center, a woman's clinic, 10 minutes away from my fucking house. So yeah, now instead of going there, uh, I would have to take whatever partner I have to uh, somewhere out of state, right? So that's really cool. <sighs> so let's keep going. Mike Pence has cut to the bottom line. He and his Republican cronies won't rest until abortion is criminalized nationally. My message, I'm not going to rest fighting that threat until a woman's right to control her own body is fixed under federal law. So yeah, Mike Pence is really on one right now. He's uh, He is ready and raring to go. He's not satisfied with states' rights to be able to pick whether or not they allow abortion. They want abortion gone completely. And we all knew, by the way, we all knew that it was not just going to stop at the end of Roe v. Wade, right? As soon as we heard that Roe v. Wade was being overturned, we knew that states were going to start flipping the law so that abortions are illegal. And now some states are even talking about making it illegal to go out of state to get an abortion, right? So that's really cool. Now, we'll get into uh, what Biden said about that a little bit later. Yeah, they're, they're going to completely fuck us over. All right. They're going to make it 1000% illegal to get an abortion anywhere in the United States. And they're going to make it a Christian fundamentalist, fascistic, authoritarian state. It's going to be great. It'd be great. On top of that, in a solo concurring opinion, Thomas says that the court should reconsider rulings that protect contraception, same-sex relationships, and same-sex marriage. He highlighted, for that reason, in future cases, we should reconsider all of this court's substantive due process precedents, including Griswold, Lawrence, and Obergefell, all of which have to do with either same-sex relationships and marriage or contraception. So they're not just coming for abortion. And we all knew that they weren't, by the way. If you've been t paying any attention, any at all, to the crazy, crazy things that the conservatives have been up to in the past two years, you knew that it was not going to end here. All right. Not a chance. No shot. I mean, it, this did not start here. There are probably a lot of people that think that it started here. This has been a long time coming, all right? I'm talking even before COVID, but I think COVID definitely triggered a lot of things, okay? We saw the anti-vaccination and anti-mask rhetoric really boost, and anti-mask was a direct result of, of uh, COVID, but, you know, the anti-vax thing was really not that popular until COVID boosted it in popularity again, boosted it, if you will. The anti-CRT laws, or bills rather, I don't know if they're laws yet. The 
anti-gender and LGBTQ bills that have been going rampant in Ohio and Florida and all these other states. Very good stuff. We knew this was coming. All right. This is not going to be the end of this. They are going to completely axe abortion, gay marriage, contraception. Probably they'll even go after interracial marriage. Who knows? Like the sky's the limit for these people or rather the like, you know, if they're going downwards, I guess it would be more like more of a, the lava at the bottom of the, the center of the earth. How the fuck can you punish people for going out of state to get an abortion? That's a great question. I know that Connecticut is one of the states that will be protecting people uh, legally. So Connecticut will be a- allowing people to travel there. They'll like be funding people who get sued by other states that travel there to get abortions, which is really cool. We need more states to do that. The Texas senator always already wants to reevaluate Plessy versus Ferguson and Brown versus Board of Education. Yeah, that was a, uh, he's saying that that was a meme post and that people need to learn to take a joke. But like, we know by now that all of their rhetoric is disguised in uh, irony, thick, thick layers of irony, very thick. Thankfully though, I have good news for you guys. The Democrats are on the case. They are ready and raring to go against this bullshit. They are done with this shit, and they will not be having it anymore. Let's take a look at what the Democrats have been up to to fight against this fascistic takeover of the United States. Let's let's look. They are they are singing. Oh. Good. Okay. Right, right. Um, you know, not the worst performance, but I do have some questions about the what the fuckery is going on here <laughs> in that ballpark, right? Okay, you know what? It's okay. We'll move on. Surely our House Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, Slay Queen, right? A woman of power, a woman of prowess, who cares deeply about the women in this country. Surely she can add something to this conversation, can really dig in and show us the power. And she is reciting a I poem. Am personally overwhelmed Let's listen. By this decision. From time she to is, time, uh, I quote this poem by Ehud Manor. Uh, okay. He's an Israeli poet. Uh, his oh, wife right, got it. Israel. He says, I have no other country, even though my land is burning. Only a word in Hebrew penetrates my veins, my soul, with an aching body and with a hungry heart. Uh. Here is my home. I will not be silent, for my country has changed her face. My country has changed her face. I shall not give up on her. I shall remind her and sing into her ears until she opens her eyes. Clearly, we hope that the Supreme Court would open its eyes. Ah, well, okay. Not exactly what I was anticipating, but don't worry, guys. There's still hope, okay? The President of the United States. Now, there's a guy who knows how to get shit done. There's a guy who knows exactly what to do right here and right now in this situation. I'm just going to pick a random spot in the speech that he gave. Let's just say mm, eight minutes and 54 seconds, okay? Just like random out of, you know, just out of pocket, okay? Let's see what Mr. Biden, Mr. Brandon himself had to say. Let me be very clear and unambiguous. The only way we can secure a woman's right to choose and the balance that existed is for Congress to restore the protections of Roe v. Wade yeah. as federal law. True, true. Let's do it. Let's no go. executive action from the president can do that. Uh, oh, oh, and got Congress, it. Congress, as it appears, lacks the vote oh. to, votes to do oh, that if now. Oh, if they lack the votes. Voters need to make their voices heard. Oh, oh. We need to vote harder? Uh, oh, okay. All right. This fall. Let's, let's keep going. It, it'll get better. More it'll get better. senators and representatives who will codify woman's right to choose in the federal law once uh-huh. again. Elect more state leaders to protect this right at the local yeah. level. Oh. We need to restore the protections of Roe as law of the land. We need to elect officials who will do that. Okay. This fall, Roe is on okay, the Okay, this fall. Okay, so this fall, it's on the ballot. So all we have to do, guys, ready? Here we go. All we have to do is hang in there, hang in there until fall right? November is it, right? How many months? Oh, like two thirds of the amount of time that it takes for a baby to gestate. Oh, got it. 
Got it. Okay, cool. So we just wait that amount of time and then, and then we come out and then we come out and we vote really hard. And uh, definitely, definitely after that, definitely we will do something for sure. You know what? Maybe I'm being too hard on them. Let's keep going. Maybe I'm being too hard on them. Freedoms are on the ballot. Okay. The right to privacy. That's true. Liberty, equality. That's true. We're all on the ballot. Until then, I will do all of my power to protect a woman's right in states uh, oh. where they will face Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. So he's going to protect women's rights. Ready? He's going to protect the women's rights. Let's go. I'm ready for this. Let's go, Brandon. Alex the consequences Gunter? of today's decision. Well, the court's decision cast a dark shadow over a large swath of the land. Yes. Many states in this country still recognize a woman's right to choose. That's right. True. Okay. So and you're gonna and you're gonna protect them even in the states that they don't, right? You're gonna make sure that even in the states where they where they don't. If a woman lives in a state that restricts abortion, right? Okay. The Supreme Court's decision does not prevent her from traveling oh. from her home state to the state that allows it. Oh, oh. So 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 just move then. Oh, okay. Oh, oh see, but see, I I was I was just thinking that maybe you know instead of like moving. <clears throat> To, to another state, well, well there, there you go. Does not prevent a doctor in that state, in that state, from treating her. Ah, good. As the Attorney General has made clear, women mm, must mm -hmm. re remain free to travel safely to another state to seek care they need. That's right. You heard it here, folks. You heard it here. My administration will defend that bedrock right. You heard it here. He will defend the bedrock right that women have to travel out of this state to get an abortion where it is allowed. That's right, boys. Woo! Let's go. Let's go. I'm ready. I'm so pumped. I'm so pumped, guys. I am ready to go. This is amazing. Biden's really doing some legwork here. Very good stuff. All right. We're fucked. We're fucked, guys. <laughs> I'm, I don't know what to tell you. This is not good. It's not very good. Okay. I feel like we already kind of had the right to interstate travel, but yeah, exactly. Ross public. I just, you know, uh, I can't fight the feeling that that accomplished nothing. So, eh, well, anyway, um, here was his ending remark for anybody who's curious. I call on everyone, no matter how deeply they care about this decision mm -hmm. to keep all protests peaceful. Ah, peaceful, yes. Peaceful, peaceful. Also, I want you guys to notice the hand placement right here, right? He's a very well-behaved little boy, that Biden. He's so well-behaved. He's got his little fingies crossed. Ah, and he's he's waiting for praise from the uh, from the conservatives. He's ready to receive his uh, ceremonial nuggies for saying the good stuff, for saying the good things like keep it peaceful, right? Only talk when you're told to talk. Only move when you're told to move. Only do what you're told to do and say what you're told to say. Stay within the realm of civility, right? Of what we deem as civil. You know, when the other side is doing the most uncivil bullshit that will literally cost lives. Be civil. Be civil, guys. Come on. Come on. No violence, guys. Come on. And 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 to be clear, this is not an advocation for violence for me. Not in the least. Just making sure we're clear on that. Peaceful now that should have sued too silent when the unheard wants to be heard. Now, come on now. Come on now. We don't want to be too rowdy, guys. We don't... Yeah, come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on. Stop donating to Democrats and donating to abortion nonprofits. Yes, please do that. When abortions were banned in Mexico, the Mexican people rioted and stormed the Capitol and overcharged it. Oh, come on. Now, we don't want to be like the conservatives, guys. Remember? Oh, but but Orange Man was bad. Orange Man was bad, and he did the, the Capitol storm, and that was a that was a no, 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 no. Yeah, protest but orderly. Yeah. Check Alex Gunther. Why? Thank you so much for the dating. follow. I got to thank I followers real quick. Is. We got Olivia Bella 17 and Baizu Seppos. I'm sorry if I missed you. Yeah, be a good little boys and girls in NBs, right? Except not NBs because NBs don't exist according to the conservatives. So be good little boys and girls. And, and uh, definitely like cis boys and girls because trans people don't exist either uh, according to them. What about insurrections at the Kavanaugh hearings, the federal buildings during 2020 Summer of Love? I haven't read into that. I don't know. What's this? Whoa, Twitch. Save abortion should be available to everyone who wants one. More resources below. Okay. Okay, Twitch. All right. All right. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Excellent stuff. Not bad. It is the bare minimum, but, you know, I'll take it at this point. It's like a fresh sip of water in a desert storm. Protesting outside SC justices against law. DOJ doesn't enforce. Democrats encourage it. 
oh, are you really bitching and moaning about protesting outside of the Supreme Court houses? Cry me a fucking river, dude. All right. <sighs> so Biden, on top of what we just heard, does not support expanding the Supreme Court. So that's really nice, okay? Uh, on top of not doing anything, doing fuck all, right? He's not going to expand the Supreme Court. He's not going to do shit. He's just going to give us verbal platitudes. President Joe Biden remains unmoved on the issue of court expansion, the White House said, despite his criticism of the Supreme Court rulings handed down this week on gun rights and abortion. That's not something the president does not agree with, White House Press Secretary Karen, Karen, Karen Jean Pia told reporters about Air Force One on Saturday when asked about such a reform. That is not something that he wants to do. Okay, so that sucks, all right? Yeah, pack the court, man. Pack it with 10 people, 50, 100. Make them all Democrats. Make them all fucking communists, dude. Like, I don't give a fuck at this point. Put whatever goddamn people you need to in there to get rid of the conservatives once and for all. The conservatives in political office have proven that they do not deserve their office. They do not deserve their position. They only want bad things for the American people, and they are a blight on society. They are a fundamentally anti-science, anti-human institution, and they hate you, and they only want bad things, and they will bring the end of society if we allow them to, all right? And we'll get into that a little bit later. Expand court when we don't get our way? A fucking exactly. Yes. Now you're getting it. Yeah, fuck our laws and our three branches. See, now this guy's getting it. See, you guys, when you stick around long enough, it, it only took a little bit of time for him to start getting it. Babies develop in a womb. That's science. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Saying basic things is science, guys. That's 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 right. That's exactly what science is. I just happened to stop buying this, and what a joke. Okay. Well, behave yourself, and I'll let you stick around. Conservative logic. Ban abortions, but vote no to reduce insulin prices and not give a fuck about the environment. Yeah, man. Listen, I understand that you have diabetes, and you can't afford your insulin as it is, but also we can't let you get an abortion at eight weeks, nine weeks, even though your child is at increased risk of having diabetes and you will definitely not be able to afford insulin for both of you guys. Tough shit. I guess you're fucked. Goodbye. Just, you know, as a for instance, I love saying basic things and self-flagellating about what a good, good scientist I am. I know, right? My favorite was when the conservatives try to, uh, astroturf science as though they know jack shit about it. You know nothing beyond basic biology and chemistry, and that's it. If that, by the way, a lot of you people think that the world is like 5,000 years old, okay? Shut the fuck up and get out. Seriously. All right, let's keep going. So, all's not lost, okay? Despite the fact that it seems like nobody is left on our side, we do, we still got our, uh, our aces in the holes, right? Bernie Sanders is, as per usual, coming out in force against this. He said, overturning Roe v. Wade and denying women the right to control their own bodies is an outrage and in defiance of what the American people want. Democrats must now end the filibuster in the Senate, co codify Roe v. Wade, and once again make abortion legal and safe. Perfect. All right. Now, then you have chuckle fucks like these people. Yeah, well, if you had graciously accepted your loss to Hillary and instead of letting your supporter ruin her convention, you had sucked it up and helped her, we wouldn't be in this mess right now. I blame you, Bernie. Yeah, totally, dude. Yeah, good job. You did it. You did it. You saved abortion. Kathleen Sean Russell hashtag truth from an abused child. Ukraine flag sunflowers in, in profile picture. You did it. You saved abortion. That was a voice. Thank you. I'm very good at my lisp. All right. But Bernie's not the star of the show here. That would be AOC. What a queen. What a champ. She has a whole ass Twitter thread. Here's how Dems can and must do more than wait for an election. Let's start with why. Seven of the nine justices were appointed by a party that hasn't won a popular vote more than once in 30 years. Finally, somebody says it. Thank you, AOC. One of those seats was stolen. Several lied to Congress to secure her, their appointment. One justice's family, Thomas, was paid by right-wing groups for years, and he never disclosed it, violating federal law. Same justice's spouse participated in 1-6, and, and he used his SCOTUS seat to vote to keep potential info related to his wife from investigations in Congress. Really cool stuff. Two justices stand very credibly accused of sexual assault, and that's the tip of the iceberg. Election or not, the Supreme Court has a legitimacy crisis, and the public reaffirms it. 75% of the U.S. public reports lacking confidence in SCOTUS, and those numbers were pre-Roe ruling. 
She's just spitting, dude. In a legitimacy crisis, the solution Biden and Dem leaders must offer can't just be one of voting, but of statutes and authority. Compared to exec and leg branch, checks on court overreach and misconduct are little to none. Leaders must share their plans for Roe and a rogue court. Past presidents from Lincoln to FDR understood the dangerous stakes of allowing an unchecked court overreach its authority and threaten our democracy. Lincoln ignored the court to issue the Emancipation Proclamation. FDR, in the plunges of the Great Depression, also sought to confront the court structure and core gerontocracy problem of lifetime appointments via public appeal. While he did not succeed, that check came from the people in Congress, not SCOTUS. The ruling is Roe. But the crisis is democracy. Leaders must share specific plans for both. The president and Dem leaders can no longer get away with familiar tactics of committees and studies to avoid tackling our crises head on anymore. Restrain judicial review, open clinics on federal lands, court expansion, expand federal access and awareness of pill abortions, etc., etc. Beautiful. We have actual fucking policies amazing it's about fucking time dude not directed at aoc at the dem party so yeah aoc is going to get attacked relentlessly on both sides for this just as she always has because uh from the left because she's progressive way more progressive than most of her uh peers in congress and from the right because she's a woman and she's brown uh you know (laughs) that's that's just how that goes for the moments when we do insist on elections, we must be precise with what we need and what we and what we will do with that power. How many seats does the party need to codify Roe? Dems must say that, not just go vote or give us six dollars to win. That is demoralizing, losing, unfocused nonsense. Dem leaders must tell voters the plan. What's the actual need? Which specific seats are we focused on? What votes do we need and where? What states and races? And what's the return? What is Biden and Congress actually willing and able to do at 52 out of 60 seats? Be honest. Details motivate. So let's wake up, everybody. What's good, Democrat? We're going we're gonna to skip that last one. <laughs> Little Libby for my taste. So yeah, uh, absolutely spinning. Thank you so much for the follow, Elon Musk. I can't believe Elon Musk is alpha is here. All right. So where does that leave us? I want to stress, by the way, that there has been a long and heavy lead up to this point. Like I mentioned earlier, this is not the beginning. We are in the middle of this. We saw this coming from uh, conservatives talking about critical race theory, gender studies, attacks on teachers, journalists, scientists, genocidal language being used against LGBTQ people. And it is genocidal language. And if you don't think so, you don't know how genocides work. Okay. They are demonizing trans people, especially trans people, but really all queer people and saying that we are essentially them. Sorry, I'm one of them. So (laughs) we and our allies are grooming children, right? Being uh, child predators, That is genocidal language that gives just by our mere existence. We are child predators, right? That gives them license to kill us. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? That's what they're headed toward. Okay. The conservatives are the party of Christian fundamentalist authoritarianism. They're largely rooted in evangelical theology, which holds that the end of the world is upon us. They are literally a death cult, literally. All right. There's nothing that they won't sink to. There are no depths they won't stoop to, no rights they won't strip, no suffering that they will not inflict. Do you understand that? We have to treat this movement as though it is the rise of Nazi Germany all over again. I'm serious. We've gone beyond the point of reasoning with them. Voting blue is necessary, but it is less than the minimum. All right. It is a prerequisite to what you must do. You have to locally organize. All right. Talk to your neighbors. Find out who's on your side and who's not. Arm yourselves. Go speak out at your local meetings. All right. City councils, school boards, etc. All right. Go speak wherever you can to whomever you can. Rally people. Get them on your side. And for God's sake, do not be quiet about this. Do not let your rights slip by unnoticed. Okay. Because you will wake up one day if you do, and you will have nothing left.